I can do it. I can do it. Now whether you realize it or not, whether you realize it or not, you can do it. Can I get a witness? Amen. You can do it. Yes. Glory to God. I want to take a moment, if I may, to put verse 13 into proper perspective and then show how it can apply to our lives today. Is it all right? Amen. Amen. Else you know this scripture is quoted quite often in the church world or the church arena. Isn't that right? Amen. You hear it, you hear it. I don't think you can miss a Sunday without hearing. Now, I can do all things through Christ, uh, which strengthens me. It sounds real good, doesn't it? Sounds real good. Amen. So much so that it gets us excited. Amen. When we shout it out. Amen. When we rehearse it and quote it so we have to let Isn't that right? Amen. A hey, glory to God. Amen. But because of uh, Amen. It isn't. Amen. Else it should be in our lives. Isn't that right? right? Amen. Glory to God. Sadly, though, we all haven't grasped the reality of the fact that we can do all things through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness? Amen. Because if we have fully grasped the reality, I believe that our lives would be totally different uh, from what and where they are now. Uh, would you agree with me? Amen. Amen. I wish I could get a witness in here. So then Paul expresses an idea here uh, that is one of the most cherished and lasting concepts uh, in our Christian experience. Uh, amen. The concept is that we are able, we are able to cope with any possible set of circumstances uh, mm -hmm, that may take place in our lives uh, where material needs are concerned. Yes. Amen. When it comes to material needs, uh, we are able to cope with any circumstances. Uh, amen. That might arise. Can I get a witness? Uh, amen. amen. Glory to God. You know, we're quick to quote verse 13, uh, but we don't look at, amen, 10, 11, and 12. Well, Paul makes it clear that he's referencing uh, his material needs. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. So the concept is that we are able to cope with these circumstances. What Paul is doing in our text uh, is commending the Philippian church uh, for their sense of responsibility and generosity that has caused them uh, to resume their financial support of him. Can I get a witness? Uh, can I break the text down? Amen. Glory to God. Paul says in verse 10, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Oh, it must have really gotten to Paul's attention. Amen. It must have really got his attention. Amen. To rejoice is one thing, but when you begin to rejoice greatly, something has your attention. Isn't that right? Amen. And he goes on to say that now at the last, your care of me has flourished again. <clears throat> at some point in time, uh, the Philippians were not able to continue their support of Paul and his ministry. Whatever the case may have been, praise the Lord, they were not able to do it. Amen. But they did not forget Paul. So when they were able to do it again, they began to... Uh, to support his ministry, my God, my God. So he said that now at the last your care of me, you didn't forget about me. It has flourished again, wherein you were also careful. Mm -hmm. You didn't let it fall by the wayside. You didn't let it slip from your mind, amen. You just simply did not have the opportunity to continue to bless me like you were doing. Can I get a witness here? Amen. amen. Glory to God. Paul was always thankful. Amen. For help, but he never made any demands upon his converts that they should help him or support him. Isn't that right? Amen. If we have been in church for at least six months, we should have learned by now that Paul was a tent maker 
by trade. Amen. And whenever it was up to him, uh, he made sure that he didn't lay any charge to no man. Because he didn't want people bickering, amen, and acting crazy, amen, about supporting him. Amen. So he let them know that he was a tent maker by trade. Uh, and whenever the situation presented itself, he could provide for himself. Isn't that right? Amen. But the Philippian church was helping to support him. Oh, my God. But something happened that caused their support to diminish. Uh, maybe somebody didn't manage quite well, else they should have. Amen. Maybe someone stopped giving like they should have been giving. Amen. Whatever the case, uh, amen, the support has diminished. Uh, amen. Glory to God. Amen. But the support was revived again uh, and it caused Paul to greatly rejoice in the Lord. My God, my God. Uh, and when you can rejoice, my friend, uh, amen, when, when, when you can rejoice when you have nothing, mm -hmm, getting a little something that will put you over the top of your praise. Yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah, when you can pray God when you don't have nothing. Absolutely nothing. When you can still lift up your hands and give him the thank, knowing that he's still your father, knowing that he's still your provider. And when he blesses you, amen, that's going to put your praise over the top. And I'm not going to be mad at you. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yes. And however, however here, uh, Paul points out in verse 11. Can I take my time with this thing? Uh, amen. That he is not talking about uh, support just so he can get some support. See, a lot of people talk about what they need so they can get it. Mm -hmm. They'll beat around the bush. <laughs> you know, they'll circle the wagon. Glory to God. Until they think they got enough courage, then they slap you right in the face with it. And then some ain't got no shame at all. What did they ask for? Can I get a witness? Amen. Glory to God. But Paul wants them to know in verse 11 that he's not talking about support just so they can give him support. Listen to what he said. He said, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, my God, my God, in whatsoever state I am, I am therewith to be content. Whether I get anything from you or not, that is irrelevant, that is immaterial. What I want you to know, my friend, oh yes, I have learned my God, my God, don't you know life will teach you things? Yes. Amen. <laughs> don't you know your environment will teach you things? Don't you know the circle of friends that you hang out with will teach you things? <laughs> Our life has a big lesson and we ought to be learning, isn't that right? And so even though Paul appreciates their kindness towards him, my friend, he is nevertheless quick to point out that he has learned by the Holy Ghost uh, to be content regardless uh, of material circumstances. Yes. Yes. Whether I have it or not, I'm content. Yes. My God, my God. Uh, I am content, amen, with clothing and raiment of food and raiment. I'm content. Yes. My God, my God. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Amen. Of all the saints and children of God were content. Yes. There'll be so much less in our houses. There'll be so much less we have to move. <laughs> There'll be so much less we have to work around. Amen. Look, think about the, 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 the few decisions that you would have to make. Glory to God. We got so much stuff that keeps us in the quandary. Uh, keep us second guessing what we should wear, what we should put on, uh, what we should use, and what we shouldn't use. Uh, my God, my God. But Paul said, by the grace of the Holy Ghost, uh, I learned to be content. I don't care what my material circumstances are. Amen. This is a teaching moment for somebody. Amen. It is Paul's 
testimony that he had been instructed to, to handle conditions of material abundance as well as conditions of material need. He's been instructed and he's able to do it both to the glory of God. Oh my God, if I have it, praise God. If I don't have it, praise God. Yes. My God, my God. He learned that. Yes. And we too should learn the same thing. Amen. If I got it, he still worth the praise. If I don't ever get it, he's still worth the praise. Job said, No, he slay me. Yet he can slay me right where I'm sitting. I'm still gonna trust in him. <laughs> oh my God, my God. Uh, listen to what verse 12 says. Verse 12 said, I know both how to be abased or made low. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I know how to abound or have an abundance. Paul said, I've been on both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> My God, and I'm still here. I'm still here. I've been on both ends of the road. But well, I didn't have anything. And I've been on the other end. Well, I've had more than enough. My God, my God, I've been instructed. I've been instructed everywhere and in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer me. My God, my God. And you're going to start your support up again for me? I'm going to greatly praise God. I know where the beast is. I know where zero is. And I know where a hundred is. My God, my God. I've been there. And I still give God praise. Can I get a witness in here? Tell your name I can do it. Tell your name I can do it. I can do it. And so no doubt Paul is overwhelmed yeah. by a sense uh, of the all-sufficiency of God. Yeah. Oh yeah, and he cries out uh, with bold spiritual insight, uh, saying, I can do all things. Oh my God, not something, but I can do all things uh, through Christ who strengthened me. Uh, until you have been at zero, uh, you don't know that he can do all things. My God, until you go from 100 to zero, you don't know that he can do all things. If you haven't tried him, you don't know he can do all things. My God, we got to live this life. My God, my God. Oh, yeah, that brings new meaning to verse 13. Hey, Amen. Not only does this declaration pertains to material goods, but I believe that the Lord has not limited us to just material things. Right. Isn't that right? Yeah. Hey, Amen. This declaration, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthen me, goes far beyond its material context. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And if we truly receive this truth, then it becomes a powerful realization. Isn't that right? Right. Uh, amen. This scripture is not simply Paul's understanding, uh, amen, of the enormous power of God, uh, but more importantly, it's God's uh, individual promise to each of us. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, once we understand that, uh, it is God's promise. Uh, to each of us. And so we need to grasp hold of the promise. Can I get a witness? Uh, we have already had a discourse, uh, amen, on the fact that the devil is defeated. Uh, and since he is defeated, uh, it stands to reason that we should be able to do all things uh, through the power of God. Isn't that right? Uh, in, Mark, in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, amen, Jesus spoke to the Father uh, who had the Son who was possessed with a dumb spirit. Uh, and he said unto him, if thou canst believe, uh, if you can only believe, uh, uh, and once you can believe, then he says uh, that all things are possible uh, to him who believes. Ah, uh, uh, isn't that good news? Ah, yeah. uh, not some things, uh, not small things, uh, but all. Uh, if you just can't believe it, yeah. if you can 
just believe it. Amen. Glory to God. Then it become possible. Amen. And once we start believing, think about it. Then we are able to cope with the issues of life. Yes. God folks ain't got no business talking about I'm giving up. Oh my God, I'm gonna lay my burdens down. I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna lay my religion down. Hey man, I'm gonna give up on this thing because don't seem like I'm making no headway. That ain't God folks talking. My God, my God, we ought to be able to do all things. Isn't that right? We ought to be more than victors in Christ Jesus. Isn't that right? But once we start believing, we are able to conquer the roadblocks and distraction that the devil throws at us. We'll be able to stand and face the music. Can I get a witness? And then we'll turn and use the word in every situation. That's why it's good to pray the word. Pray the word. If you pray the word, you'll stay in the word. If you pray the word, the word will work for you. Isn't that right? I say that because the devil knows the word. If he didn't know it, Jesus would never use it on him. And when Jesus got done using the word on him, my Bible teaches me that the devil flew from his presence. Can I get a witness? And when the devil leaves your presence, the angel of the Lord will come minister unto you. Can I get a witness? My God, my God, once you start believing, you are able to be victorious in every situation that come against you in your life. Can I get a witness in here? My God, my God, listen. It doesn't matter what comes or goes in your life. I, I can continue to do what the Lord has called me to do. Whether I have little or whether I have much, I can still do it. Isn't that right? Even if I had nothing, I can still do all things through Christ. God will make something out of nothing and use it for his glory. How many of you believe that? Oh, I think we spend too much time trying to tell God what to do rather than praising him for what he has already done and what he's going to do in the life of the believer. My Bible tells me and my life experience tells me that all things that he does, he does well. Can I get a witness? We may not understand it right now, but it's going to work for your good. How many of you believe that? It's going to work for your good. And let me tell you while I'm here, my uh, the promise I can do all things through Christ. Uh, I want you to know that phrase alone uh, is devastating to our self-pity. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, they kicked the leg right out from under our despair. Uh, and our child is soaking uh, when things don't go our way. Uh, can I get a witness? Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, if you want to hear your pity party, uh, just start believing uh, and say that you can do uh, all things through Christ uh, who strengthen you. Uh, amen. The devil is the thief. Uh, and we can do uh, all things through Christ Jesus. Uh, he's defeated, I tell you. Uh, and if he's defeated, uh, how can he have the victory? Uh, my God, my God. Uh, if he's defeated, uh, how can he keep beating you up? Uh, my God, my God. Uh, if he's defeated, yes. Why don't you rise up out of your raggedy life? Rise up, amen, out of the mock in the mouth. And let God set your feet on a rock to stay. And let him establish your goals. If the devil had actually been defeated, then rise up like the hero that you are. And join those who have already gone on. Let them know that you two are fighting the good fight of faith. Oh, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. It ain't no talk with me, sister. I can do it. I can do it. Why? Because there's nothing too hard. Well, when we start believing that, our lives will change. 
if we start believing that. Mind God, my God. Uh, let me say this before I close. Uh, amen. Just as sure as we are humans, uh, there will be times when we are physically tired. Isn't that right? Uh, there's going to be times when we are emotionally drained. Uh, isn't that right? Uh, there's going to be times when we are financially stressed. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, and distress. Uh, you know what you say. Your, 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 your change is strange. Uh, my God, my God. Uh, yes, there's going to be adversity. Uh, there's going to be frustration. Uh, uh, but we must never take refuge. In the diabolic suggestion, amen, glory to God, that God has challenged us with more than we can bear. That's diabolical. That's of the devil himself. Don't let nobody believe or cause you to believe that God can put more on you than you can bear. Oh, refute that thought. Reject that thought. Yeah. The devil wants to kill you. Uh, he don't love you. He doesn't like you. Uh, he wants you to join him uh, in the lake of fire. Yeah. Uh, my God, my God. Uh, he don't want to be there for by himself. Uh, uh, but the Bible said he will be there uh, yeah. along with the false prophets uh, and the Antichrist. Uh, my God, my God. Uh, and the devil knows he's going to the fiery pit. Uh, uh, and if he can get the company, uh, if he can have have your company. He'd rather that you be with him. Yeah. But I stop by to let you know, my friend, that you got an option. Oh, you don't have to go there. You got an option. You don't have to give in. You got an option. You don't have to succumb to those diabolical thoughts uh, that he plants in your mind. Isn't that right? Oh, he would not allow you God, uh, to be tempted, uh, to be tested uh, uh, beyond that which you are able. Uh, isn't that what the word says? Uh, why? Because he's faithful. Oh, oh, we serve a faithful God. Oh, we serve a loving God. Oh, we serve a kind God. Isn't that right? Oh, but the Bible tells us that he will open up the doors and provide a way of escape oh, that you may be able to bear it. I submit to you today, walk through that door before you throw up your hands. Walk through that door before you sit down on God. Walk through that door before you lose all hope. Can I get a witness in here? Oh my God, my God. Oh yes, he'll make a way so that you may be able to bear it. So I submit to you today, let us embrace this inescapable conclusion that we can meet the challenges of our lives. We haven't been called to quit, but we have been called to be very courageous uh, to be strong and of a good courage uh, isn't that right uh, so that we too uh, may rejoice with the Apostle Paul uh, amen and all the other faith heroes uh, who have gone on before us uh, I can uh, I can uh, I can do all Oh, not something, not just the thing that are easy to me, not just the thing that are convenient to me, but the hard thing, the difficult thing, the trying thing, the confusing thing that leave me perplexed and not clear my understanding. I can do all. Oh, God, my God, what a mighty God you serve. I can do all things. all things. I don't care what you're going through. Yes. I don't care how grim the situation may seem. Yes. I don't care how ugly the circumstances are. Yes. <laughs> we can do all things. We got to quote it and we got to live it. Don't quote it unless someone run up on you and wonder what happened to your fine quote. You sounded real good, but I see something missing. <laughs> Are we not written epistles? Yeah. Being read of men, isn't that right? Glory to God. God love you. I love you. 
Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I hope the word has helped yeah. you. The word has encouraged you. Amen. And as I pray, whatever you stand in the need of, it's not too hard for God. He created us. We're made in His image. We are His workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Isn't that right? right? So whatever it is, whatever you're going through, know that God will see you through it. He's not going to put any more on you than you can bear. Glory to God. And what you think you're going through, you're going through alone, it's not just common to you. Someone else have already passed that way. Glory to God with a testimony written for you that you too can do it. I don't care what it is. Pain, sickness, loneliness, finance, hurt, glory to God, division, family, brokenness in the family, whatever, God can do it. If thou just can believe in all things, will be possible. Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks for who you are in our lives. We realize that you're more than enough and so we give you praise. We don't walk this way to give up. We don't walk this way to quit. But we walk in belief, knowing according to your word that it's going to work together for our good. Because we have been called by you, O oh Lord God. I pray right now, let your eyes run to and fro in this ministry, in this congregation right now, Lord God. Stop and minister and show yourself strong. On behalf of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. In the name of Jesus. For your word declares that your eyes run to and fro in the earth. I say, Lord, stop right here. I ask that you stop right here, right now. Give him. Give comfort. Give understanding. Give wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is needed, release into the lives of your people now. In the name of Jesus. Let us take your word, Lord God. Assimilate your word. Digest your word. And live your word. In the name of Jesus. Let us be that beacon of hope. Oh my God. That beacon of love. That beacon of good works. That beacon of unity. In the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare it. In the name of Jesus. Say to loose your hold now. Loose now in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God, we thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. Thank you all for watching. Amen. On Facebook, praise the Lord. We pray. Amen. What you heard here today, amen, is a blessing to you. Encouraging you to do what God has called you to do and to walk upright before him. Praise the Lord. We thank you for tuning in. If you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, amen, just keep watching, amen. We have on the screen how you can give, amen, where we are and what have you. You're looking for a church home, amen. The doors of course of Victory Christian Ministry are open. We pray that the Lord will send labels into his vineyard, amen. For truly the harvest is plentiful. Amen. So we thank God for you. We give God praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless.